Thanks for staying with us. If you're just tuning in, we're discussing the future of Nigeria, if, um, the future of infrastructure in Nigeria. And it's important to emphasize that good quality infrastructure is important not only for faster economy, um, faster economic growth, but also to ensure inclusive growth. By inclusive growth, we mean that it bene the benefits of of growth are shared by the majority of the people of a country. Thus, the inclusive growth will lead to elevation of poverty and reduction in, in, um, in income inequality in any country. So when you, when you do that, everybody becomes, you know, at least stable enough to, to, to live by. Now, remember, you can join this conversation, Twitter dot at Plus TV Africa, or at Ways Show Africa 1 with the hashtag Ways, or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 803 Why am I talking fast? I don't know. <laughs> I right. to just get into right. the middle of the matter. Yeah, so Honorable Minister, I was going to say that if everything were to be in place, uh, can we ever get to see a country, you know, can we ever get to see infrastructure in our country like the way we have, for instance, I mean, since you mentioned Dubai, let's use for, um, Dubai, for instance. If, if we put everything in place, because I am tired of politicians using road constructions, using, we we'll build roads, we we'll build schools, we we'll build whatever, as a political, um, what's it called, um, mm -hmm. campaigns. So, and prayer will points. we ever, ever get to that point in the nearest future where we'll have proper infrastructure that would accommodate, oh. or bearing in mind, by 2030, we hear that our numbers in terms of population will be crazy. Well, you and you, perhaps in the childbearing age, have something to do about controlling the numbers. I am done with that business. <laughs> but so you have you have a role to play there. So, but seriously, I think we will get there. Um, everything is seasonal, and if you go back to the tapes and the history of the development of Europe and those countries we want to be like, there was a time when they were dealing with these issues. They've solved them, and now they're dealing with other issues. So there is still a healthcare problem, and there's an education problem, even in other parts of the world. But they're no longer dealing with infrastructure. They're not dealing with accessibility and financing and health insurance. So it is a, an indication of the level of our development. I, I saw a series called the USA in the 60s. They couldn't hold conventions, election conventions. They brought Marines in to stop themselves from fighting. But now the elections look cleaner and better, yeah. but they are not necessarily so. But that's just a distraction. <laughs> so they speak to the issue of the moment. And infrastructure will be an issue of the moment simply because, as I told you, we spent almost one and a half decades not building new things after the 70s. So politicians who want power will then say, if you vote me, I will, I, will, I, will, I will do this. Of course, you cannot stop building infrastructure and renewing infrastructure. But I'm sure the need and the conversation will reduce. In a few years' time, you will see bigger and better airports. Mm -hmm. um, the Mutalat Mohammed Airport, if you go back in history, it was the best in the whole of sub-Saharan Africa. At the time it was built, no nation had an airport that that good. But we didn't expand. So at that time, Heathrow was probably at Terminal 2. Heathrow is at Terminal 5. Mm. But the expansion didn't take place here. So we're still at the same terminal. So we've outgrown. It's like, it's like trying to wear your teenage jeans now. You are going to be uncomfortable. So yeah. you need new clothing. Yeah. And that's what's happening. So that's the future I see. Lagos, Ibadan, you can go by rail. But some of that future is already happening. Even on the roads we're talking about, Enugu to Portacot, you couldn't go in a day before. You can go and come back now, but we haven't finished. Lagos, Ibadan, Bini, Ore, people used to sleep on that road. Yeah. That's not happening anymore. Now, if you, are, if you are driving through the roads now, you will see road signage coming up, telling you where you are, how many kilometers away you are from. That, that wasn't there three years ago. So that future anymore. is slowly coming. But it's a big jigsaw being put together. Now, as the airports become more efficient, the lucky port is coming. There are port upgrades coming here and there. All of it will tie together. I am not afraid of that future. I can see it in my mind's eye. And I'm sure that if we stay focused, it will happen. If we put our money where our biggest need is, then that future will happen. In terms of sustainability, we have FEMA now doing our road maintenance. FEMA is getting some increased funding from what it got yesterday, but it's still not enough. 
FEMA still has liabilities. I think I saw their report today. They are still owing about 13 billion for maintenance. So we just need to keep this going so that we can have a much more efficient uh, uh, operating environment. So our ease of doing business initiative is also tied to infrastructure. Mm -hmm. You will also see we are now in universities. Yes. Fixing the internal roads of universities. Yeah. If it had been done, we won't meet it. Mm -hmm. So we've done 44. And there's still a lot more universities and uh, tertiary institutions Institute. asking for this. So all of this will converge in the fullness of time. If okay, we remain focused on the plan. Okay, um, Honorable Minister, I've heard um, cement manufacturers agitate that instead of asphalt, why don't you utilize cement? Do you think that is the future? Yes, mm -hmm. there is. The, the Oroshoki Road is being built with cement by the Dangote Group. The Obajana Road is being built with cement uh, as we go on. The difference between the cement and the uh, asphalt road is that the cement is known as the rigid pavement where the asphalt is the flexible pavement. So one of the things we're also focusing on is not just cement, but also stone roads, so that it becomes more labor intensive and it employs more people to work. So we are designing, we're developing the design manual now. There is no design manual yet for rigid pavement that is applicable nationwide. Because in engineering, you have to have a minimum standard and a maximum standard. So that work is being done by my ministry now, but we now have to share it with the whole built industry, the architects, the society of engineers, core, everybody has to have an input, and then it becomes our nationally applicable standard. So we will see more of that coming on. All right, so someone is saying, that's from Samuel Okonlawo says, the Lagos Ibadan Expressway is a testimony. I can testify to that being one of the, regu um, since he's a regular user of the road, he's saying that that road has been, you know, there's a lot of work going on and he's commending your work. Someone is saying, please ask the Honorable Minister um, on Echo Bridge and the old Abiyakuta Road. Um, I don't think you might have a lot of time to answer that. I, because we've seen a lot of clips. I mean, if the viewers have been watching, we've been showing a lot of clips of all the works because we, we got all those information ahead of time so we can show people what we truly want to focus with this conversation is not about what the, the problem is or what is... Go we want to know what the direction what is because I think yes. the vision also helps to say, okay, this is the focus, this is the direction, this is where we're going. So that at the end of the day, we'll know that this is the plan. Um, Sanzi, you wanted to say something? Yes, I do. And I think this question is very imperative because we find out that it's so easy to blame the government. Of course, everybody has a part to play. Now, as a responsible citizen who would want to take responsibility, my question to you, Honorable Minister, sir, is as a responsible Nigerian, how do we help the government do to better in infrastructure? Worries. I think one of the things I would recommend is uh, much more care and protection of the infrastructure asset. Two or three weeks ago, we suffered severe damage to a bridge in Obaninde in Lagos, where a tanker lost control and, uh, and uh, burst into flames, severely damaged the bridge. We had to close it for safety. Just last week, the same thing happened on the Kara Bridge. Uh, over speeding, a gas truck exploded. With, and unfortunately, not only did it cause loss of life, extensive damage to the infrastructure. We are raising money to complete. So that just they're just setbacks and needless waste. So people need to be more careful. People need to be patient. People and even if we have the best infrastructure, if we abuse them instead of use them properly, it won't serve the purpose uh, and so that's one that's one important appeal and um, we we also need to do proper training before we drive get on the highway uh, and respect other people's rights on the highway slow down observe speed limits so that we reduce the traffic uh, the, the accidents and the carnage particularly the loss of lives i, I mean it, it just doesn't uh, bode well i i just received a letter from one steel company in Quara accusing motorists of overspeeding because the road is now good and they want to put speed bumps 
And so we are looking, why do you put speed bumps on, a fa on an expressway? So that's going to probably cost us an overhead bridge. Avoidable if you ask me. I think me, that job should be maybe for the road safety officials. Before you issue a, a, a license, you know, people should actually go through driving school and go and learn how to properly use the road because most of Nigerian use, road users don't know how to use the road properly. That is true. Yeah. Yes, but, but Ua, in how many homes should, should FRSC be? FRSC can't be in every home. They can't simply stop every car to check. It will make life difficult. Why don't we then take the initiative? Since you asked me to advise, mm. why don't we then take the initiative and the self-responsibility for voluntary compliance yeah. instead of being chased to do what is right? Yeah. Okay. I, okay. Okay. So I would want to just dive into where nobody has. That's um, the housing side. No. On the housing side. So no. I know that you have always challenged the figures, the housing gap figures that always say it's between. 17 to 22 million housing gap that we have. And you have said that that report does not really take into consideration the empty homes and houses that are not occupied. And, and have, I've heard you say that consequently, and that will be looked into. But my, my um, question here would be, after the audit, well, what, what is the impact that this audit will have on the looming housing problem that we have? Because we cannot ignore that there is a housing problem. And before you answer, when you want to consider the rural urban migration, that would always happen as long as the resources, as long as opportunities are uneven. People would always migrate to, to the urban, urban cities. So how do we address this housing problem, whatever the gap is? Okay, my, 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 my position is simply that if you don't properly identify a problem, it is more likely that your solutions will not be helpful. So if you go to a doctor and you tell the doctor that you're having stomach pain when in fact you're having back pain and the doctor is treating you for gastrointestinal problems, it's unlikely to solve your problem. So diagnosis is critical to proper resolution. So, um, but it really doesn't matter who wants to have the debate. The problem is where is the problem? The problem is largely in urban centers. If you ask people who live the rural areas, they will tell you, if you ask 10 people why they are going to the urban center, they won't tell you they're going to look for help. They will tell you they're going to look for work. So part of the problem is now being addressed by the agro program of the government. Now, a lot of agricultural work takes place, at least the farming side takes place in the rural areas. Packaging and processing and all of that and retail, of course, takes place and consumption largely in the urban area. So there are many people who have left the cities and gone back to the farm. That is one step. Infrastructure is also helping to slow down migration because most of the building materials, laterite, granite, limestone, and all of those things are in rural areas. So you don't see those people. They're making money. So on every land from which we remove, we extract laterite. That's the red soil yeah. to construct a road. The landowner gets between six to 10,000 Naira per truck hmm. a day. So you don't see those people. Those are people who are employed, who are making money, who are not on your data. Hmm. And on Oroshoki Highway, for example, at halfway the project, we had used 5,000 trucks. Wow. So do the math, 6,000 times 5,000 trucks. Hmm. Okay. And that's happening. So that doesn't include granite. It doesn't include sharp sand. Hmm. Then the people who are trucking it, the truck owners too are a different business. So the contractor who gets that supply pays the landowner, pays the truck driver, and keeps the profit to himself. And this is also happening in our housing sites. Hmm. Now, what we want to see when we are discussing housing, everybody, well, not everybody, let me take that back. Hmm. Some people seem to focus on only what the federal government is doing or only what the state government is doing. But there's a lot of activity happening in the private sector. People building houses, people offering houses to people. I see many of the adverts on your program. It is only because there's an enabling environment that this government has created. Yeah. Government is doing its own direct intervention, but people will be building houses if the environment wasn't con conducive. So you have to see the totality of that picture. And then there are empty houses. And I am saying, in this COVID period, people who have 
had houses that you can't rent for two, three, four years simply because you're asking for two years rent in advance. Why don't you take one quarter's rent in advance now and see whether people will afford it and move in? The houses that have been overbuilt, why don't you think about breaking them down into more smaller compartments? So if you build a five-bedroom and suite house, large rooms, and nobody will rent them, why don't you think about renting them out now as single rooms because they are N-suite? Brilliant. Okay. I think we have so many questions and comments, but I'll try to quickly wrap it up because Honorable Miss, I, I knew this was going to happen to us. We'll run out of time with you, but hey, <laughs> we had to get what we, what we can get. So someone is asking about, can we ever find a future in Nigeria where we completely take the trucks off our roads? That's the future question. Now, someone was also asking about way bridges. You know, like, you know, when you travel abroad, I've traveled on, 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 on the streets from Atlanta to, to um, what's it called, to San Antonio. And you would not see trucks on the road. They, go, they have one particular route where they go through, go through and they weigh them and all of that. Can we, have, can we get to that point, you know, for the future? You know, um, and the last question was on NHS. So if you can quickly wrap it up in two minutes. NHS. What yes. So someone has said that um, they applied for NHS in 2017 and up till now they are yeah. yet to get their... Yeah. Yes, the ni ni housing funds. Uh, NHF, sorry. NHF, NHF okay, sorry, National sorry. Housing the, yes, housing fund, sorry. Okay, let me start with National Housing Fund. Um, I don't know why you haven't, but whoever it is you are, send a letter to the managing director of the Federal Mortgage Bank and copy my office, and we'll do our best to try and track what the problem is for you. Uh, whether we'll have way bridges, we have some way bridges already completed, but you need warehouses to run way bridges. Because if vehicles are overloaded, then you have to offload them and store them. And the offloading, the overloading truck pays the penalty for warehousing. Yeah. So it's a business we are trying to create. We don't want to do warehousing business again. So it's part of that HDMI process that I was telling you about earlier. Yes. We're going to concession all of this out. Will we see trucks off our road? Yes, we will. There was a time when there were no trucks on our road when the rail was working. So as the rail resumes now, the Lagos canoe rail through Ibadan is going to go to the port. And as that happens, more of the tankers will have to reconfigure their vehicles, their, their, their tanks onto wagons, and lift cargo straight from the depots and all of that. That's the future that I see. That's why I am excited and confident about it, because it is already almost there. The Ibadan Lagos section is almost finished. The Abuja Kaduna section is already completed. So when you link Ibadan to Abuja, all is left for you now is to link Kaduna to Kano, mm -hmm. and we are on our way. Mm -hmm. So there's a big logistics section already being built in Ibadan by some investors. So that's where you are going to see containers stacked. You won't see them in the city anymore. Mm -hmm. This is a matter of a few years to go. Absolutely. So it will happen. Absolutely. We, we, we trust you. You know, we've been following you for a very long time. So we trust you that it's going to happen. But it's the continuity part that we're not sure of right now in Nigeria. But we really don't have time to talk about that. But we want to say thank you so much, Honorable Minister, for joining us. And we are hoping you'll be able to come again, you know, because there are so many questions. I am, I am apologizing. I'm telling you, we had too many questions. We couldn't take all of them. But thank you so much, Honorable Minister, for your time. We really do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. It will be my coming. pleasure to come back whenever you want me. Yay! Thank, thank you. you so much, Honorable. Thank you. All right, so ladies, quickly. I mean, we have like one more minute each. I was going to take him on land use. I know, land but we don't have that time. So we, oh, I there's so much to. we didn't talk yes, about. But what yeah. I would like to say is that yes. I would love to see this future. Absolutely. So everything said here is beautiful. And while you said something very, very cogent, mm. continuity plan, sustainability, yeah. what happens when power change happens? Yeah. Well, yeah. that I depends mean, on Nigerians anyway. That that's the point on them. It doesn't depend on the government. Yeah, so I'm saying it depends on us to voting people that will continue. Continue, them. absolutely. Sounds well, it. I do like uh, Honorable Minister's approach to a uh, solution to housing challenges. Yeah. I mean, ordinarily, I would not believe a politician, but um, I think uh, no, Honorable Minister... Are you that, sure you're not biased? No, no. I'm, not, I'm not biased. But I'm I, a very straightforward person, but I have to say that Honorable Minister Fashola, he is a man of integrity. That's what I'm saying. Let me I tell you. You know why I say that he's a man of integrity? I benefited from the housing scheme in Lagos. It's true. I mean, I 
didn't know anybody. I just went online. I applied because I met all the, crit the, the, the criteria. criteria. I, I got the housing. I didn't need to know anybody. Well, I think we, we, I, maybe we, he had promised us that he would come the next time. Yes. We so. now have to talk of availability and affordability. Yes. Yes. So you because see what he, he said about, about having you to pay rent for the... How would you regulate that? Would there be a strategy to yes. regulate how okay, 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 aside given. from that, he was talking about the private sector involvement. It's not affordable. Well... <laughs> So okay, he would come so back. He would come back. He has to. Yes. It's crazy. Absolutely. How many people can afford to buy a home for hundred million? Okay, ladies. So please watch a repeat broadcast of this episode. You don't want to miss this tomorrow at day. three p.m. <laughs> <laughs> it's been an insightful so conversation. Keep the conversations going on all our social media platforms. I want to apologize again for all those. Who, uh, there were too many messages we couldn't take okay. it. In case you missed um, today's quote, here it is again. Investment in infrastructure is a long-term requirement for growth and a long-term factor that will make growth sustainable. So would hope, hope, hope our growth that we're seeing in Nigeria will be sustained. We'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy your evening. <laughs>